What we're installing today is a 4,000 gallon per day defender with the anti-scaling and permeate flush option. We'll show the permeate flush option later because it's already installed. Um, this is what the bodyguard is, included is the tank, your carbon, gravel comes in a box, your control valve with the um, lockout solenoid already installed. And there's the install kit and the solenoid. We have your anti-scalant concentrate solution, which you'll mix with deionized water when you make water. Here's the tank. Here's the stinner pump kit. This will get attached to the location right here. Here's our 140 gallon tank. We have our con or permeate line port. We have our float switch installed. And then we have our bulkhead fitting installed. We include a ball valve, a close nipple, and a flex connector. That will get connected over here to the repressurization pump inlet port. And then on the defender, we are supplying water from the bodyguard to this port right here. So it goes through a pre-filter. We have our product line hose coiled up. We have our waste line hose coiled up. On this side, we have our tank full. So this will go to the tank float. We have pre-treat lockout which that will go to the bodyguard control head. And then we have our power cord for the unit. This is a 110 volt unit. Every unit from this point forward will be wired 220 volts though. And then our second plug down here is for our anti-scalant pump. When it comes time to fill the bodyguard, we include a cap if this cap was not included. Just take a piece of packing tape, cover your distributor tube here. You don't want to push it on too tight, but you want it on there. Take your funnel. Take our gravel. just like that. And this is the carbon. You'll want to wear a mask, as we'll see here in a second. It does put off some dust. one cubic foot of carbon. Now we'll add our half cubic foot. At this point, the carbon is porous, so what we recommend doing is taking a five gallon bucket of water, fill the unit up. Um, it doesn't have to be all the way full up to the top, just up to where the carbon's at. Um, you'll begin to hear what sounds like a deep fryer. That's just the water working its way through the carbon and the oxygen coming up through it. At this point, we'll remove the filter. Remove the cap, 
then we'll go to our other parts. We have our upper basket, transformer, which we'll set aside for now, and our lubricant packet. Just take a little bit. There's an O-ring right inside of here. We we'll want to put some on there. A little bit goes a long way with this. And then we'll take some more. And lubricate this O-ring right here. And you can see the little keys here on the upper basket correspond with our little points here. So you press it in there and then rotate it. It doesn't take much, but it stays there. Goes over the distributor tube. It takes a little force to get it down on there. But you get it down to about where the threads are. Press down. Thread it on. And then hug the tank. Just snug it up a little bit. It doesn't need to be super tight. If you're feeding a house that has copper plumbing, you will need a remend kit. This puts minerals back into the water so the RO water does not eat the copper plumbing away. Included are two kits. Um, you have your bracket mount, fittings for the bypass, and a length of tubing. Alright, so we got the remend kit bracket mounted to the wall. So what we're going to do next is plumb in the bypass. So we need four pieces of short tubing and two pieces that are 10 to 12 inches long. We can leave this filter on making water or we can shut it off while you change the filters. That way you don't interrupt your flow to your storage tank. So what we'll start by doing is we'll take a ball valve and I like to take the, the tang on it towards the flow of water. It's just a thing that I've done over the years. Put one piece in there. We got another piece in there. Install a T. That goes right there. Another short piece. And our T. That goes there. Install our longer piece here. Another ball valve. This piece is short, but it's about what it looks like. And then from this T, we'll come over to our tank port. And then our product line for the Defender that's not in here yet will get put into this T. And then the filter canisters, I'll show you that here in a second. When you unbox the cartridges, they do still have the cellophane packaging on them. These are fairly heavy, so the easiest way to get them out without damaging them is to tip the unit over. Leave the plastic on there so you don't get any debris. Push the canister back over. Flip it in. Pull your cellophane off. Make sure the rubber o-ring stays in place. Clean any debris off that may have gotten on it. The O-rings are shipped separately so they don't get lost. So we'll pull one out and set the other side. Take our O-ring. And they do have lubricant on them already. Lift 
lift her up. Get her in place. Get it about hand tight. Take our filter wrench. You want to get it up as high as you can just so you get enough contact area. That's all it needs. Don't need to be Hercules with them. And we'll do the same for the other one. Next what we're going to do is put our anti-scalant tank and pump assembly together. Pump has a mount on it. Just slides off. We need some screws to attach to it. And these are not included in the kit. We recommend stainless so you don't have any rust issues in the water. Plate just mounts somewhat centered there. You can either use these two slots or make your own holes for some stainless screws. All right, went ahead and put a screw in there. What we'll do now is pull our lid off, turn the tank around. We want to drill a one quarter inch hole in the back here. We'll take our tubing. Be enough in there to reach the bottom. If you get lucky, it comes back to the top. What we'll grab next is our filter strainer weight. Tubing just gets inserted in the end. Right here. And there's a weight in here that it needs to go down the center. And if you, it's hard to see, but as you're feeding the tubing up, you can see it come through the filter screen. And you want to stop about an eighth inch from the end of it. That way it doesn't bottom out and not be able to pull the anti scant solution. We'll feed the assembly back in there. And we want to want to make sure it sits down around the bottom. And then we will, there will be shavings in there from putting the screws in and drilling the hole. You'll want to get those out of there with a vacuum cleaner or you can turn the tank upside down and shake them out of there. Once that's done, we'll come over here. We have our barrels and nuts. Let me grab. We got our knife here. Um, cut enough so it's not not kinked any. We'll put our nut on first. And then the ferrule, the tapered end, will go towards, towards the pump tube. So we'll insert that next. And if you look on the pump head, there are arrows right here and right here. The bottom one is our inlet, so we will take our draw tube, insert it till it's bottomed out, Push our ferrule up, and we will tighten our nut. You want to hold here and here, just snug it up. It does not take much. Our next step is installing our injector. This also has a check valve in it. This will stay plumbed in. This can unscrew, and there's a duckbill check valve in there. If you're not getting anti scalant going through the tubing, make sure that it hasn't lost prime or that there's nothing blocking this piece. But we'll take this over to our defender. And over here on our pressure pump, there's a T with a cap in it. We'll remove this cap. This gets Teflon tape and pipe dope here. And if you'll notice, if you put it in there, this stem is too long. It is okay to cut half to three quarters of it off of there so it will not bottom out. This does not impede the flow of the water either. With the injector installed, now we'll move to the next part. 
and I want to stay here for a second. This is the permeate flush solenoid. This is an additional option. If not, you will have your plumbing. It will be a 90 out of here down to your UV light if the UV light was purchased with the unit. This plug right here that is zip tied to the side of the frame controls our repressurization pump for the house supply. When you decide where you want your anti scalant tank to sit, we will run the remainder of our line over, put on our nut, put on our ferrule with the taper facing the, the injector, insert our tube all the way, put our ferrule up. Tighten our nut, just snug it. Now, you don't want this to kink, no tight turns, so just leave a little extra. Nice loop like that. And put our tank over here. I have the line running back behind the defender through the frame, so we'll just get a nice amount of tubing. Got it. Put our nut on, put our ferrule on, and our top port is our supply, or our, yep, our supply. Run our nut down, snug it up, and that's, and then we'll take our power cord here in a little bit and on this side of the defender frame on the bottom side of our control box we have a extension cord with female this is what controls the anti-scalant pump on the bottom side of our controller we uncoiled the pre-treat lockout and our tank full sensor wires there's just a red and a black wire this is just a continuity test. There's no voltage. Uh, just needs to see if the switch is open or closed. So we have our yellow and black wires coming out of the back of our body guard. Take and connect. Black to black. And we'll do yellow to red. And we will secure the wire back here just so it doesn't pull out if for some reason something touches the wire. That's it as far as the pre treat lockout. Our other wire is our tank full sensor. This one will get connected in a similar way. Except for the float switch, we have a black and blue wire. So we'll do black to black and red to blue. Um, there is another red wire in there. We cut it off because that is a normally closed switch. If you'll notice, the float switch comes with a lot of extra wire. This float switch is used for all of our tanks. So we need the length for all the other different tanks that this float can go into. You can cut it. What you'll do is loosen this nut, pull out all the wire, Then our float switch, we want to leave about four to six inches from the bottom of this tube. And then we'll tighten the nut up here to hold the wire in place. And then as that float switch comes up, it'll shut the water level off. And then all the extra wire 
you can either bundle it up or you can cut it. Just remember the black and the blue wire are what you want to use. When you get to a point where you're going to connect your tank to the repressurization pump, take our stainless nipple here, thread and dope each side, screw that in there, take our ball valve, thread that on there, thread this stainless flex connector on there, and then it will connect onto the repressurization pump. You want to support this plastic piece while you tighten this. This is a o-ring seal so it doesn't need any thread tape or pipe dope. Just snug connection and that is it. Alright, the last thing to do before turning water on is install the UV bulb. So we're going to remove our blue cap. pull our quartz sleeve out of its protective shipping container. I'll make sure inspect it for damage. Should have a round end and a perfectly flat top end. Looks like a big test tube. Lower it down in. And there's a spring in the bottom that locates it in the middle to keep it centered. Now we'll take our gland nut and our o-ring. O-ring goes over the quartz sleeve. And it's normal for it to stick up some. And we'll take our gland nut. Thread it in place. Just snug. Don't need to break the tube inside of it. No ring will seal it. Once that's in place, push our UV ball up. Either wear rubber gloves or touch the ceramic ends of it. Do not touch the bulb. Take the foam off of it. And when it comes time to replace the bulb, the key for it gets shipped on the end of it. So you'll take the key that was in it when you do a bulb replacement, throw it away, take your new one, and there's a socket on the side of there, and there's a little tang that faces the back that just plugs in there. So before we put our bulb in, there's a spring. If you don't put the spring in there, it's going to be a little difficult to get the bulb out if you unplug it first. So we'll just take our spring and Drop it in there. We'll take our bulb, set it down in there. And we'll take our bulb connection. Tie the extra wire back up. You can see it has keys that locate it. So we will support the bulb, plug it in, should be even all the way around, and there are locating pins that correspond with the retainer here. So we'll just push down, give it a little quarter turn, and it'll pop back up. And we will put our grounding screw right there. And obviously we'll tighten it. Now 
Once your tank is full, we will come down to our Grunfos pump. It is plugged in. The red light shows that it's off. There is a fill hole here. It has a built-in funnel. Um, if you do this before the tank is full, you'll need a cup of water. Um, fill this up. It holds roughly a gallon of water. Once it's full, you'll put the screw back in, make sure it's tight. If you have water in the tank already, you can take this plug out and gravity purge it. And when you get water out of it, just put the screw back in. What we'll do now is press the on off button. This turns the pump on. Now we have water going into our house. And I have a faucet open in the closest bathroom to purge any of the air in the system out. So once all the air is out of the system, you can go ahead, turn the faucet off, and allow the unit to operate on its own. Now one note is, if your storage tank for some reason runs out of water, if this pressure faults and your tank goes empty, the Grunfos pump is a standalone pump. It has its own internal pressure sensor. Um, it has a it has a pump on light, auto reset light, and an alarm light. If that alarm light is lit, press the on button to shut it off. Figure out why your unit wasn't making water. Once the tank's full of water again, come and press the on button. Once you have all your plumbing connections made, we will plug everything in. You can see the defender's powered up. Our bodyguard is fired up. And also our Grunfos pump is fired up. We're going to wait to do the UV bulb because the UV bulb does produce heat. So we'll wait till we have this canister full of water before we do that. Now initial startup on the bodyguard, since it has carbon in it, there are very fine particles of carbon in there. So what we'll do is press our set change button for about five seconds. You'll see the seven go to a one, release it, press and hold it again. Now you'll see it moving to its first cycle, which is backwash. Now what you're going to do is the bypass, that is the bypass, we'll move it, I usually line that pointer up with the first screw, then I'm going to come over here, and turn the water supply back on. Now once you get a full stream of water coming out of your drain line, you can go ahead and open the bypass all the way up. And you're going to want to let this run its full cycle, or you may have to do two cycles depending on the time until this line clears up. On initial startup, we'll take our waste control valve, shut it, bring it out two turns. And we'll come down to our throttle valve, turn it in all the way, just crack it open. And when you initially start it up, the system pressure will stay at zero for a few seconds, and then it'll slowly start to climb up. Um, note your inlet pressure as you turn it on. If it drops below 30, it's going to go into a pressure fault, and 
you're going to struggle to get it to stay running until you get your set points right. So we'll go ahead and press the power button. Solenoid opens, then the pump will kick on. And we're at 100 PSI with just under two and a half gallons per minute. So we'll open our waste control valve until we get about, about to three. And then we will increase our system pressure with the throttle valve. We'll come back and look at our waste control valve and close it and get it back down to three. And we're reading off of the, the top ledge. So we're at three gallons per minute on the waste, right at 150 system pressure. And we are producing just under three gallons per minute of our product water. As you can see, we went ahead and filled our anti-scaling tank with 15 gallons of RO water and the anti-scalant solution. The center pump is currently running. And when you first fire this up, it will pull out of the tank and you'll be able to follow the bubble all along the line until it gets over here to the injector. If you do notice that it is stuck where the bubble isn't moving at all, you can open, take your nut off, and bleed the system this way. But currently, we have good flow. Alright, we'll let the tank fill up. And then we'll come back and we'll go over how to prime and turn on the drum post pump. When you get a fair amount of water in your tank, you're going to want to confirm that the tank float switch does work. So we'll reach in here. We will invert it so it is vertical like so. And then with permeate flush option, it will show FLS. So what it would do at this point your Grunfos pump would be turned on right now because our permeate flush solenoid is open. So it will be pushing water back through the membranes to rinse off the outside of it. And at this point, it will still make a little bit of water. So you're not entirely losing the water that's already in the tank. Once you have all the air purged out of the system into the house after starting up the Grunfos pump, you can go ahead and turn on the ultraviolet light controller. You'll insert the key that was attached to the top of the bulb. So you'll plug it in. And then we'll wait for it to go through its startup sequence. Once startup's complete, it'll show the um, lamp life screen. This should be green. Um, you'll have, should be at least 365 days. Um, the bulb UV intensity decreases over time. Uh, so it does need replaced once a year. The light will stay lit, but what we're after is the UV intensity to kill off any of the bacteria that's in the water. So you would order a replacement bulb, which will be the bulb, and it comes with a new key. So you would reverse the installation of the bulb, just do the quarter turn on the bulb, pull it up, disconnect the cord from the bulb, pull the bulb out, dispose of it properly, put the new bulb in, 
connect the cord back to it, take the existing key that was in it out, throw that away, put your new one in there, and it'll go through the startup process again, and you're good for another year.